New Morphism is a relatively new design track where shadows are used to make it seem like interface elements are extruded from surfaces. In this tutorial, we'll show you how you can create interface elements and icons in this style. We're starting with an empty new document. Let's set the fill color of the background to a very light gray. Now, we'll need to choose the Shape tool and add an ellipse shape to the image. You can double-click the ellipse shape to automatically add it in the center of your image. To keep the circle in proportion, click and drag one of the layer handles while pressing and holding the Option and Shift keys. Now, we'll need to set the fill color of the circle to the same light gray we used for the background. Let's choose the Style tool and do just that. Simply click the eyedropper next to the color well, and then click the background. The key to getting this look is using a pair of complementary shadows, one light one and one dark one. Let's add two drop shadows to this layer. We can also delete the stroke layer style, because we won't need it. For the first shadow, set its blur to 17 pixels, distance to 11 pixels, angle to 135 degrees, and opacity to 100%. Now, set its color to pure white. For the second shadow, set the blur and distance to the same values as the first shadow. But set the angle to 315 degrees. For the color, you'll need to use a medium gray. We're using a medium gray with a slight blue tint, as our background layer also has a very faint blue tint. These two shadows are really all you need for this look. To make it easier to apply this layer style to other shapes, we can save it as a preset. Let's create a new layer style collection by opening the More menu and choosing New Collection. The current layer style will automatically be added to this collection, and we can also rename the collection to Numorphic Shadows. and the preset itself to raised, keeping everything neat and tidy. Along with objects appearing to be raised, you can also use inner shadows to make them appear pressed down. To do that, delete both drop shadows and add two inner shadows. Set the blur of the first shadow to 17 pixels, the distance to 11 pixels, the angle to 135 degrees, the opacity to 60%, and the color to the same medium gray as before. For the second shadow, set the blur and distance to the same values as the first shadow, the angle to 315 degrees, the opacity to 100%, and the color to pure white. You can now also save this as a preset to your Numorphic Shadows collection and name it Lowered. Switching between the two states is now super simple. You can also experiment with different shapes or combinations of shapes. Press the Command J keyboard shortcut to duplicate the ellipse layer and resize it while pressing and holding the Option and Shift keys. If you apply the lowered shadow to the lower layer and raise shadow to the upper layer, you can create a checkbox effect. Or if you apply the ray shadow to the lower layer and the lowered shadow to the upper layer, you can create a ring effect. The Numorphic style only works with a limited number of colors, so it's not the most versatile look, but you can also use it in dark designs. Let's hide the upper ellipse for now and adjust the layer style to work in a dark design. First, set the fill color of the background to a dark gray. Then, set the fill color of the ellipse to the same color as the background. Now, change the color of the first shadow to a neutral dark gray. And finally, change the color of the second shadow to pure black. 
you can now add this layer style to your presets and call it Raised. To create the lowered version of this layer style, make the upper ellipse visible again and set its fill color to the same color as the background. Then, set the color of the first inner shadow to pure black and the second inner shadow to the same gray color as the color of the drop shadow applied to the lower layer. Finally, add this to your presets and name it Lowered. Just as before, this will let you easily experiment with different layers and combinations of layers. Generally speaking, the numorphic style won't work for every element in every design, but you can apply these principles to certain elements in a variety of designs and even use them in illustrations like this one. Thanks for watching and have fun experimenting with this style in Pixelmator Pro.